So, you think that what happened last week is somehow connected to this letter? Well, it has to be, Wait! Isn't it? Maybe if the time machine was real, this letter is real too! Exactly, Professor. What are you I don't know about that, oh. but these two elements aren't the only puzzling issues. Are they not? Tell me, Luke, have you heard about the recent disappearances occurring here in London? Oh, oh yes. I read about it in the paper. That's Some of London's greatest sheets. scientists have been mysteriously like vanishing. Yes, and I can't shake the feeling that those disappearances are linked to this whole affair. In any case, it seems our best course of action is to head to the location mentioned in the letter. Yeah, sounds about right. Good idea! Oh! Prime Minister Bill Hawkes mysteriously disappeared in the accident at the Time Machine presentation. What could possibly have happened to him? Yes, that's, it does seem rather odd, if you ask me. Following the clue in the letter, the Professor and I set off. What awaited us was one of the biggest mysteries we'd ever encountered. No, no, I do love the title for this game. To start with, I thought Unwound Future was a better title, but that was before the game came out. Oh, I'll explain it in a bit. Luke, Luke's letter is going to start interrupting me. God damn you, Luke. Somehow, a single letter had made its way back through time. And the sender, strange as it sounds, was me. The future me, that is. Little did we know that this letter would draw us into the strangest of situations. Yeah, sounds about right. Okay, basically. Obviously, when it was released in Japan, it was called The Last Time Travel, and then it was announced to be called... The, oh, for Pete's sake. Prologue, the clock shop of Mitten Road. In America, it was announced to be called The Unwound Future. And then, finally, it was announced that the European title would be The Lost Future. Now, at the time, I thought Unwound Future was a much better title because it flowed better and it had a nicer sound to it, and Lost Future just sounded stupid and wimpy. However, after actually playing the game and seeing what happens at the end, Lost Future is actually a much better title than any of them. I mean, the last time travel makes sense, but Lost Future is definitely the superior title. So it's rather confusing as to how they got on, how they came up with Unwound Future because Unwound Future makes no sense whatsoever. I'll, I'll talk to you about it like this right at the end when it occurs. Solved. But um, yeah, Unwound Future makes no sense for yeah, the title for this game. That's a relief. So yes, well that's the second puzzle solved. And the answer was H, just to let you know. And we get all the tutorial again. Joy. So you just touch the icon and move with the arrows, as with every other Professor Layton game in the franchise. But I think we're going to want to go into here. First, look at the journal. Letter from the future. A letter arrived for me today. Curiously, the postmark is dated ten years from now, and it was sent by someone who claims to be Luke, living in the London of the future. This puzzling letter has naturally piqued my curiosity, and I have decided to head for the clock shop it mentions on Midland Road. The Time Machine Presentation. Come on. Let's have a gander at that one. Come on. Hurry up. Oh, it is nice just to listen to this music. Anyway, casting my mind back to the accident that occurred during the Time Machine presentation, I can't help but think that there must be some connection between those events and this letter. I hope we find some clues at the clock shop that will help us make sense of all this. Yes, yeah, because it's a very confusing matter, isn't it? Now, the one thing I really like about Lost Future is that it just throws you straight into the action. Curious Village was a... Uh, Alright... 
then you had um, Pandora's box, which was really slow to get going. It didn't pick up until sort of like when you hit full sense. That's when it started to pick up in terms of the plot. Whereas this game just sort of throws you straight into it. And we just destroyed a car. Right. Naughty Florence telling us to destroy cars. I bet it was you who caused the riots. Silly old cow. With your, um, weird haircut. So... Once again, we're going to go for all of the hint coins, because I'm just a badass like that. But I think we've got everything, haven't we? No. Right. Now there's these one... There's these things where you've got to tap an area multiple times before a thing will appear. I don't think it was quite like that in any of the other games, but, um... Yeah, if you tap it like five, ten times, something will appear in something. If it's there. Yes, we've already been there multiple times already. Well, once already. But yes, they have to do this every game just to sort of help the people who are new to the franchise. Even though they really should have started at Curious Village. Not that it really matters because none of the stories interlink. But um, there's a, there's one character who um, does get mentioned. Well, does appear actually, I should say. So yeah. Anyway, there's something there, uh, and loads of other places, of course. So, let's talk to the rotund, jovial, laughing man here. I'm pretty sure he's got a puzzle for us. Ooh, his name's Vito. Maybe he's got the Vita early. Oh, oh, yay! Remember where it was, mate. Oh, bloody typical. Okay, next puzzle, here we go. Zero, zero, 003 bus scheduling. Your bus journey to work takes one hour, you wait for two hours, and then the bus home from the bus stop takes you to where you work. Which one do you want to get on to... Make it as short as possible. You want to get on this the one at one's eight. as good as solved. Phew! Because they That's a relief. literally don't have to wait much. Yeah, because you catch the first ba bus back in the morning to take the least time over all. So you get to work at one. Then you work for two hours, so that's three o'clock. And then you've just got to wait an hour or so for the next bus to appear. It's much easier than any of the other ones. Yeah. All these squeaky buggers wanting to just have us solve their puzzles for them. They're just getting lazy. Oh, Statue and Scarfen! Yes, this is our old friend from all the other games. Yes, you have, Statchen. You've seen us in Pandora's box and Curious Village. Fool. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she did. Ah! You see, we do know you. Oh, silly statue. Silly, silly, silly statue. You just blew your cover there, matey. Oh, they go somewhere. Oh, Rue, charming Victorian houses. Okay, so this definitely doesn't take place during the Victorian era. I can tell you that much. Oh, 004, moving day. Getting boxes up to a house. 
The one the smaller one can only carry one box at a time, but it takes 30 seconds to reach the top floor, and the other one can carry two boxes at a time, and takes one minute to get to the top floor. So, it's time to do a little bit of maths. Or at least a little bit of sort of explanation-y stuff, and there's seven boxes in total. So, oh, we're just shoving it in. I think a grand total of three Here's minutes. My answer. Phew, that's a relief. Yeah, because he just won and all sorts and stuff. Yeah. Okay, let's find this clock shop now. There it is, I see a clock. That's clearly the clock shop. Clearly. Can we get in? Yeah, of course it must be the place. Look, it's got a clock. Unless it's Big Ben. It, unless it's just there. Big Ben and town halls are like the only places with clocks on them. Oh, there's a puzzle. Oh, of course there's a puzzle. Zero, zero, 005 the timepiece. Oh, this is quite an interesting one. You've arrived at the clock shop, but there doesn't seem to be any way of opening the door. You notice the strange design below displayed on the door, and a voice calls out from the inside the shop. Touch the panel with the timepiece on it. What you want to do is click that one, because it's answer. an hourglass. So, no an hourglass is a timepiece, because apprentice. the sun's falling rather than the clock. So that's the one that you need to click in. Uh-huh. Oh, of course that did the trick. That would start to creep me out. There's so many clocks. Oh, clocks. Oh. Oh, she's creepy. She's very, huh? very creepy indeed. Look over there! What's this? It's a time machine, is it not? Now, this is Spring, who's meant to be a nice old lady. Now, her husband's called Cog. So, yes. Cog and Spring. Hell. Oh. oh, she's got a clock in her hair. There's so many clocks here. Oh, she knows who we are. Yes, of course he's in the papers a lot. He's a bit like Sherlock Holmes in that respect. Oh, <laughs> burn. Living in Stardington Flats, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a bit mean enough. Uh, we always need to prove ourselves, don't we? Zero zero six eye on the needles. Okay, there are two threads A and B. How many needles do, eyes does a thread A pass through? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice even number there. I've got a good feeling about this one. Well, you should do, yeah. Jeez. Just as I suspected. Of course. 